Okay, welcome back to the channel. I'm not sure where this is going to fit within all of the jobs that need doing, but I've cleared, my wife and I have cleared all the PIR out of here and we're getting that floor prepared. So we've stuck that over there for now and I'm going to start opening up this wall a bit. So I've done a mark the whole way up, got the angle grinder ready to go on that. I'm going to be putting a damp proof membrane in here and because those floor joists are rotten, I'm going to be having to do a whole load of new joists for the other part of the house as well. But in here, you can see the bricks that were holding these joists up are knackered as well. I mean, that's just a little pier wall. It's not actually structural or anything, but that's going to have to come out as well, which is a bit of a pain, to be honest. Those ones along there are fine, thankfully. So yeah, lots to do and lots to figure out, solving lots and lots of problems that you discover along the way. Okay, so this is called sister ink, where you have a joist butted up and it's secured. So I've got a timber lock on that side and another timber lock on this side. I'm gonna put a couple more in as well, but for now, that's sufficient to hold it in place. And it is sitting right over here, timber locked up in to this point. This one I, I, I pre-drilled it and then couldn't get it in because of the brick there which I have to leave in place. So there are two solid timber locks in here. And what I've ensured is that the floor joists from here into here are perfectly level. That this itself is perfectly level. And then into here this here is also perfectly level as well. So that's really good. The way I've had to do it, because there's this bed of mortar and these timbers are slightly old and they've shrunk and these are slightly smaller, I've got a two by six and then I've packed it up with OSB, which seems to be the uh, the kind of savior in this project, really. If you look at all, a lot of the other videos we've done where levels have been slightly out, We've just put down some 11 mil or some 18 mil OSB and because of its compressive strength, you know, it doesn't have any compression at all this way. The, uh, the building inspector said he was perfectly happy with that. So I've put some damp proof membrane under here and I've cut away the rot and I'm sistering these along and that's going to be perfect. That's, that's going to be really, really good at stopping well, basically supporting the floor. And it is very, very sturdy. I can stand on that with no issues at all. Once I've done all the rest of them, I can then obviously put noggins in as well. Nice and sturdy and perfectly level, of course. On these ones here, there'll be joist hangers. So I'll, I'll bolt this one into the wall. I'll bridge this somehow, somehow. And then all of these ones will have joist hangers stringing across, sitting on this dwarf wall, which is solid, and hanging on that one there. I am finally at the point where I can chop out this rot, and I've already started doing it to see what's going on. So I'm using the reset with the metal blade on it because I still haven't bought a timber blade. I should do, but because I'm getting towards the end of the demo part of the project now, you know, this is perfectly sharp and perfectly good. It's getting through really cleanly. Uh, it is what it is, Check it up. Right, uh, loads of access and view under here, which is nice. I think we're gonna be ripping out a lot of this copper uh, under there that you can see. Got good air, air bricks and ventilation, and you can see I've chopped back to very, very good, stable timber here. Really, really solid and dry compared with this sort of more punky, rotten stuff here. So, and look at this in the, in the actual door frame itself. So I'm gonna be chopping out all of the rotten bits and I'll either replace them or uh, cover them. Frankly, there's gonna be architrave and door frame and door lining, we're going to be replacing the door linings and everything. But there's no point in replacing a perfectly good frame, so um, just for the sake of this little bit of rot here. So I can take that out and either replace it with a small bit or just cover it. That's fine. 
What I need to do now though is really have some kind of investigative time and thinking about what I'm going to do with this because that stuff is very rotten and this one goes the whole way across and supports these floorboards above. Now what I can do is I can literally just take it out and then these floorboards would float which isn't ideal. I can then prop it back up with a new one and it won't happen again because it's not going to be covered in concrete. But from back here it's perfectly solid and stable so and it which is helpful actually because at that point it then the walls are sitting on it the way i don't know if you're familiar maybe you are and i'm t telling you something you already know but for those that don't realize the way they built properties back in the 1920s and 1930s certainly in this style of property they would build the floors and then they would build the walls a stud wall sitting on top of those floorboards so this floorboard here actually runs continuously all the way up to here and then it's a new floorboard that goes across and then the walls just sit on top of it and they're just little kind of clinker block stud walls effectively rather than in some other properties where they would you know they would build the walls and they would then suspend the floorboards inside occasionally they would do that not always but sometimes they would do that but obviously here um they've built up to I haven't cut any of this. This is where it stopped because there was the wall and then it was a con poured concrete floor. So this area defies that style of construction. But where it was concrete under here, we've obviously ended up with this. If you haven't seen the video of us ripping out the concrete floor, I'll post that up here. As usual, go and check it out. But I'm gonna be ripping this out now, which will leave these floorboards unsupported momentarily until I can get another four by two or whatever dimension of timber I need in to to block this up here. While I'm doing that, I can then obviously reconnect the ring circuit and turn it back into a ring because at the minute it's not a ring. I've got all of these new joists here ready to go. So these are six by twos. What this allows me to do is sit these up on here, sister them up against this joist and then run them up to the end here. I'll be timber locking them through. On these bits, it will be sitting on these bits, it will be sitting on the brick wall uh, and still be keyed in here and sitting on that little block wall there. I'll put some damp proof membrane down to protect the underside of the timber, but it'll have airflow so it won't, it's not going to rot. So that's what I'm going to be doing and hopefully I can do that without too much aggro, but it's going to be getting these out that's going to be the, uh, the biggest drama uh, for now. It's worth me saying is obviously I'm using six by threes for this. They are not what was specified originally. Eight by threes were specified instead of six by twos, but the six by twos fit better in here and without any notching. And also they are basically at 300 centers. These old four by two joists that are in here are at about 300 centers. So the span is very short the distance between them is very close and I'm putting about three noggins in. I put one, two, and there's a third one in under there. Mainly actually so the pipe could be clipped to it but it actually helps the rigidity so I'm going to do that again anyway. Where I've got this rot here, these are what I think of as proper 4x2s. What I mean by that is it actually measures a, a complete four inches. Uh, if you look at this, six by twos do not measure six inches, they measure kind of five and three quarters. Same as mo modern day four by twos. Uh, let's try a three by two. This is a three by two, two and three quarter inches, right? So back in the day when it was a four by two, it was an actual four by two. When I tore out my loft, I saved all of the rafters. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out up there. I've kept all of them down behind my workshop at the bottom of the garden. So I, can, I think I can replace this joist here with one of the rafters from the loft, which would be really, really nice because that distance with the brick and everything is a bit difficult to make up otherwise. And I want to sit it on there and all the rest of it. The Where it's problematic, fine, I can chop all of these floorboards back. Oh, by the way, when you're lifting floorboards, if you're doing a series of them, lift them and lay them in line, because that way I know one, two, three goes, one, two, three, they all go in line. Everything's laid where it's come out from, just by the by. 
I can chop the rest of these and I can lift them all back. That's fine for this entire run. Where it becomes difficult is where I've got rock here, right at the point where this no longer is supporting from here onwards. I've got a floorboard right on top of it. Uh, it's just it's just a little too close for comfort. And there's this brick wall sitting right on top of it as well, of course, which is super convenient, right? So I need to have a little bit of time. I need to think. I need, I'm tired. It's late. It's quarter to nine. It's late. I've had a long day at the office. So I need to chop these across, lift them up. It'll make it easier for the plumber as well. I know it's a little bit overkill, but it'll make it easier for the plumber to get the pipes out for the flow and return because we're putting the radiator over here. I can then replace this with a 4 by 2 This ring that was on here, I am going to move over here. And we'll have a plug socket on this wall, we'll have a plug socket on that wall, and there are a couple over there. So, in short, in summary from this class, don't throw out wood ever because you never know when you're going to need it. Hopefully, I can say that with some degree of certainty because I think they were 4x2s in the loft and I think they'll fit. So what I've done is I have cut back all the way here, as you'll have seen on the time lapse. And this timber is nice and solid on the inside. It's a little bit rotten and punky on the outside, up to there. But I reckon I can chop back a little bit. I, I can I can sort this. This is this is not not so bad actually, having seen it from this side. Also, as I mentioned. Cutting it back this far gives nice easy access for the plumber, he can get his pipes out, sort his flow and return. Yeah, it just makes life easy for everyone, right? My wife and I have just noticed something. We've pulled out all of the nails in here. And this is what the good nails look like. Nice, straight, clean, really good quality. And then this is what the nails look like that are coming out of the rotten wood. So, I mean, look at that. Really, really punky, rusty, horrible. If you were to see the wood from this side, you'd think there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And then if you pulled that nail out, you'd be thinking, what on earth is causing that? Well, the rot is coming through and oxidizing the nails. So I did not know that, and I'm not a scientist, I'm not claiming to be, but I bet you if I pulled out these, 9 out of 10 of them would look like this. And on that one, which is completely clean, they look like this. So if you do happen to pull up nails, and they're clean like this, this bearing in mind this nail has been in this floor untouched and undisturbed for the best part of 100 years now. If you pull them up and they look like this, I would strongly advise doing a little bit more digging, doing a bit more investigation, because... There might, that nail might be telling you something about your timber that you don't necessarily see or know from what you can uh, see at first. Right, I've cut down here with the recip saw. You can see, look at this dust. So yeah, right again, rust in the nails there. But that, I have to say, is nice to see go. I'm not going to miss seeing that one. Look how much has rotted away in that middle section. Yeah, look at this, look. look. Yeah, there's like, half, like less than half of it left. Yeah. It's in both, you lift it up. Yeah, look at that. It's been literally been eaten away by fungus, fun, fungal spores. This is just a point, this is not, uh, this is not woodworm. This is not a, uh, this is not an insect. That has that has eaten this. The, this is a fungus that has caused this, and it's actually a fungus that is present everywhere, all the time. The thing that activates the fungus is moisture and a lack of airflow. If you were to get you know moisture, it would cause mold, and I can show you some of that because we actually have when we had our little water feature here, it caused 
some mold spores here because mold mold and fungus is everywhere all around the world all the time it's like the biggest global organism going but because there's airflow there that's not going to cause me any problems this obviously caused problems because there was no airflow because there was concrete butted up against this this side that had airflow solid as you like right aside from the fact it was stored outside and is therefore a little bit damp just on a couple of sides that is an absolute win because it is identical timber from the loft as was used down here i mean look it's like they were made at the same time which is perfect so i'm going to leave this inside to dry out the damp bits that's fine and then i can install it there's no rush on this actually it's going to be a couple of days before i even want to install this because i want to give space for the plumber nick i want to make his life easy so that is a real win i'm very happy with that I'm gonna call it a night thought i'd just show you what i'm up to i'm, I'm not really filming while i'm doing it just because taking a bit of concentration but i want to show i want to show you what i'm up to i'm getting all of these joists spanned across here and as always i'm getting them well i don't even need to say it do i you all know what i like now there it's actually really difficult to get this spanned across properly and dead level because I am actually having to, I've got my wife's car jack and I've got my, I've got a truck and I've got a, a Toyota, I've got a Hilux and it comes with this kind of like bottle jack which is insanely strong, like just the coolest thing ever. And it's really difficult to get these floor joists perfectly level because what I'm actually having to do is prop up the floor joists under here and I'm having to pack them out again because this brick wall is crumbled away in parts. The floor joists have sagged with the rot. And I'm trying to level everything up as much as I can. So I'm going to have to lift. Um, when I looked up at the top of this little wall here, it's actually dropped and come away from where it was. So I'm slowly kind of going along and getting these six by twos in, jacking them up sliding kind of either 11 mil or 18 mil packers underneath them to get it nice and level all the way across as much as i can and as level as i can this way that's that's where it's really difficult you know getting it level this way and this way across kind of multiple areas merging into the house it's it's really not easy so it feels like a bodge and I think if I was, say I had built this house from scratch, this definitely would be a bodge. But because this house is 100 years old and I'm merging new with old and this is the kind of in-between bit. This is was old, but it was concrete. That's the new bit. It, it, is, it is a bodge, but it's not a bodge. I'm doing whatever I need to do in order to make it work and to make this space across here flow nicely. So... Yeah, that's what I'm up to and that's why I'm not really filming it, but I'm kind of concentrating on, on doing it. It's also five to nine at night and I'm pretty tired, so it is what it is. This is the first point that I've been able to span from this joist over to this joist though. And I have to tell you that is incredibly satisfying to see. That being dead level, I couldn't help myself, sorry guys is really really nice because i don't know whether these i haven't even checked whether the original joists are level or not uh, they're close they're close but they're not a million miles away given they're 100 years old you know i think that's not too bad this one here this is my new joist yeah, it runs perfectly flush with this over here that's on and this over here, not a hundred percent, but it's not bad. It's not bad, merging old with new. I'm kind of happy with that. I'm, in fact, I'm very happy with that, you know. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I can't start my knit very tiny. Yeah. Oh, this isn't going very well, Daddy. It's because you've got to practice. Now, uh 
It's Sunday today and my wife is out visiting some family members, socially distanced of course, outside. But I just wanted to show you, so I'm it's daddy daycare while building as well. So I tried getting my kids to hammer nails into dots on their initials and this is how far we got. So well done them. That was about 10 minutes. But in the meantime, what I've done is I've actually uh, put down and propped up and just put a little noggin and some supports for the four by two that goes across here. So this floor is now back down. I've left one board up and another board there up because the plumber is gonna need access to for this flow and return pipe there and also to plumb in the radiator over there. But that, that'll come in time, probably sometime this week actually. It's only, only a short, short period now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a DPM under here just belt and braces, stop any moisture coming up through the floor. I don't think it will, it's very stable, this floor. It's been completely inert for about 100 years, and this is probably the first daylight it's seen since, well, since it was put down. So I'm gonna put out a bit of DPM. I'm actually, because I've got so much of it and it's decent quality, I'm gonna actually just use this 500 gauge vapor check barrier, which I used to wrap all the walls. You can see just a little bit of green tucked up there. Obviously this is a vapor barrier, it's polythene, so it's perfectly strong. It's not, you know, there's not gonna be any sand blinding going on top of this. This doesn't, you know, this doesn't need to be puncture proof per se. I just need to roll it out. So that's basically what I'm gonna do now. And uh, it'll just, it'll just stop moisture from coming up basically. All right, there you go. Fairly quick, easy procedure. I don't think that would have been the longest time lapse uh, going on the internet, but there you go. Nice and simple. I, you know, I don't really need to do this, but I've done it just for belt and braces. I'm not going to be tacking it down, lapping it up, yada yada yada. It's just, it's just not necessary. It's just here to stop any moisture that could come up. You'll see with these here. These the joists that I've kind of spanned across. I've basically sat them on the brick, or there's a slight gap actually in some instances. But if it were ever to slip, it's going to be catching on structural wall that goes down onto foundations here. And I fixed them through with screws. I've sisted them up against the joists over here. I've put a noggin across here, and this is the new four x two that I put across. I've basically done whatever I can in this instance to bridge because this is very much new floor in the old house meeting old floor in the old house so look you basically do whatever the hell you can to make it fit make it work and to get it level and i have so i'm pretty happy this is a nice level floor across I don't know if i've got my spirit level let me see if i can show you on there you know matching old with new that's pretty damn good, actually. I'm quite happy with that. That's basically all the flooring done. The only little bit of flooring I've got left to do is in here. This is kind of the downstairs toilet. I'm framing up the walls. You'll probably see this happening in a different video. I'm going to be putting some floor joists across here, but I want to wait until the plumber has put in where, um, has finalized exactly where this pipe is going. But I'm going to run them across like this. I've put one additional in here before the wall so that the floorboards can sit on that bit. And that, other than that, though I literally have two that need to go across there and we're done. All the flooring, all the suspended floor is done. I say that, actually what I need to do is just pack it up a little bit with this. I'm, I might show it, I might, I'll probably show it when it's finished. I'm not gonna show it while I'm doing it because it's boring. All I'm literally doing is just putting these on and that is so that we get a nice flush, flat, smooth um, floor height uh, with those sliding doors over there all the way through. The threshold will be raised ever so slightly there, which is fine. Luxury vinyl tile on this side of the floor. We are gonna be having carpet on this side. So the height being raised here and not being raised there actually doesn't matter because the threshold will bridge across there. These little blocks are basically the packers that I put to go from the old wall there to prop this up at the right height. 
and I left it sticking out because it's actually an 8x3 and I just bridged it right across in the middle where there was no tip or wobble on it so I found the balancing point of that piece then I sat that on top and I've screwed them down, screwed them across and all the rest of it. I did this last night, uh, it was a bit dark, a bit loud and I didn't really have time to film it but I thought I'd just quickly show you what I've done. Cleaned out the bottom, all the green stuff down there as you may remember. It was covered in dirt and mess. And then I've basically just put two rows of noggins in here. On this one, we had already put some noggins in to support that gas pipe. So I haven't bothered, you know, you can see I've gone around there, that's fine. This one I went next to because it was close enough and to be honest, I didn't really think about it. But anyway, we've got nice straight rows of noggins along, along here. I've also put some supports under here. It's kind of rough and ready to be honest, but it just gives a little bit of support. You know, that's a that's a three by nine under there, six by twos up underneath it, nailed in place. Super sturdy, very, very strong. There is absolutely zero flex in this floor at all now, other than just, you know, just a slight amount as you'd kind of want in a timber floor. Right, time for me to jump up onto my desk and this video will pick up tonight when I'm back.